ೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂಕದಾಂತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಶ್ರೀಯುತಾಪತಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ವೈಷ್ಣವ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾತ್ವೈರಂ ಸ್ವಾವದೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಾಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದಾನ್ ಸಹಗನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಕಾಂತ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಕೋಪೀಶ ಕೋಪಿ ಕಾಂತನಮೋಷ್ಠೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಜನ ಗೌರಾಂಗೀ ರಾಧೇ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಶ್ರುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಾಂಜಕಲ್ಪತರೂಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧೂಭಯ ಪತಿತ ಪಾವನಿಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವಿಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಿ ಗೌರವಕ್ತ ಬಿಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ Hare Krishna, thank you very much, Ashwin. My internet is a little unstable today, so I have made you the host, please. Uh, because my computer... ಅರಿಕಾ ಮಾತಾಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಮಾತಾಜಿ ಓಕೆ Hare Krishna Mataji I I thought I wasn't um, audible I couldn't hear you yeah oh, my internet is having a problem but um, at least now Now I it's can... okay okay so thank you very much for joining in and making your uh, self available to us and giving us your time uh, please accept our humble obeisances on behalf of everybody who have joined the group and who are about to join uh, sorry it has been a long time i have missed your association um mataji um we are reading the shrimad bhagavatam we are on canto 1 chapter 18 and the text for today is 9 and 10 mataji so i hand over to you mataji hari krishna hari krishna mataji thank you so much uh, om namo bhagavate vasudeva sorry om agnana timirandase anyananjana shalakaya chakshurum militam nena tasmay shri gurave namaha namo om vishnu padaya krishna prashtaya putale shrimate bhakti vedanta swamin niti namine namaste saraswati devi kauravani pracharine nirvishesha shunyavadi paschata deshatarine ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಕದಾಧರ ಶಿವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ 
नारायणम नमस्कृत्यम नरम चेव नरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जयम उदीर ये श्रीनुमता स्वागता कृष्ण पुण्य श्रवण कीर्तन हृदय तस्तौपी अभद्रा विदु नोति सुगृत सकम नष्ट प्रायु अभद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेविया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्ति नैष्टिकी One minute, dear uh, devotees. All right. So we are nearing the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, it looks like, and uh, this is the last chapter. So in the first 10 verses, what is going on is Maharaj Parikshit's uh, birth, death, and dealings with Kali is being talked about. Specifically, the first three verses, it talks about birth, consciousness, and surrender, and death. And then the fourth one talks about the glorious death of, uh, glorious death. Uh, where uh, there is a dedication to Lord's topics and constant remembrance of Krishna. And then fifth to sixth, it talks about the fact that Kali could not flourish in Parishit Maharaj's reign. And then seventh is talking about what Parishit Maharaj saw as a good quality in Kali. And then Kali's ineffectiveness to the devotees and importance of Harikatha is being spoken in 8 to 10. So we will see uh, the overview of all the verses uh, today so that you kind of get an idea as to what we are entering into. Uh, I'll also try to quote uh, our Acharya's commentaries here to supplement the mood and the feelings of what is happening uh, real time. So we will try to understand and analyze all these verses. And then, uh, I mean, obviously the verse for today is uh, eight and nine. So we will also go through that uh, in detail. So we will get started, dear devotees. Uh, it's a very interesting chapter. And after this, we'll be, after finishing this, we'll be entering into second canto, uh, which is a very technical section. Uh, and I'll try my best to uh, help you all understand the overall, uh, I think from a creation perspective, what all we need to understand is something I look forward to. So let's get started with 18th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam and get through the whole section. Okay. Yeah. So the first verse, um, so as you can see, uh, we saw about, uh, I mean, if you look at 18th, 18th chapter, it will talk about Parikshit's meeting with Sukadev Goswami, the reason for Parikshit giving up his kingdom. So those aspects will be talked about in the last two chapters, basically. So Parikshit Maharaj's birth was discussed. Parikshit's activities in terms of Kali Nigrahanam was discussed last chapter. And in the context of um, the context in which Parikshit is abandoning, renouncing everything, sitting on the banks of the Ganges to hear from Sukadev Goswami, that is spoken here. So his Janma, Karma, uh, uh, Niryana, all those things are spoken about uh, in this chapter. These three things, these three aspects that are asked by Saunakadi Munis. In chapter four, they were asked. Also in chapter 12, that is being answered. But here also, in the next two chapters, we'll be specially discussing about uh, the, uh, the Parikshit Maharaj's reason for giving up everything and sitting to hear from Sukadev Goswami. So this is all what is going to be covered in the chapter 18 in a nutshell. And uh, Parikshit Maharaj, we all know, he was cursed by a Brahmin boy. So in this chapter, we see Parikshit, the episode of Parikshit getting cursed by the Brahmana boy is discussed. So in the beginning, Sutta Goswami is addressing Shaunakadi sages. So Shaunakadi sages, what are they? They are trying to glorify Krishna Katha. That is half of the chapter. And the rest half is the context, the story where Parikshit, once he was thirsty, so what happened? Then he came across Shamika, Shamika Rishi's uh, ashram and he put a death snake around him, around his neck. So all that is the half of the chapter. So the first half is basically discussing Krishna Katha 
and how Sukadev Gos Sutta Goswami is continuing to glorify Krishna Katha. This is um, going to be seen till 23rd verse. And from 23rd, 24th verse onwards, uh, there is a particular context that is being discussed, which is Parikshit Maharaj getting cursed. All right. So this is sort of what is going to come up. If you look at uh, Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur's commentary uh, about the 18th chapter, what he's saying here is the main thing is the context in which Parikshit got cursed. This is his point. Actually, Parikshit, what uh, he put, we all see, we all know the story. Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur is also repeating that point to say that he put a dead snake around Shamika Rishi, Shamika Muni, and then he came back home. After coming back home, what happened to him? He started lamenting. He started regretting. And he was lamenting that, how I behaved in such a particular manner? Why did I behave in that manner? What happened to me that I got so disturbed? This is, this is what he, he was, how, how did I disrespect uh, such a great soul? Then after he heard that Shringi, Shamika Muni, uh, Samika Rishi's son, Shringi had cursed him to die within seven days. So that's the main context of this particular chapter. So what is done? The story is continuing, right? So he spoke about Kali Nigrahna. So in this first verse, it's sort of the summary that uh, Sri Lavishna Chakravati Takura gives to us to say that, Sutta Goswami says, Maharaj Parikshit's birth, what about it? It is amazing. And what about Maharaj Parikshit's death? It is also amazing. So he is such a personality whose birth was amazing. His activities were amazing. And his death is also amazing. Even Kali Nigrahanam, even the personality of Kali was defeated by him. The personality of Kali could not influence him. And then, such a person who is so wonderful that even his death is so amazing. That's what we'll be seeing in this chapter. So he is such a wonderful character, Parikshit Maharaj. This will be tackled in the first three verses of Srimad Bhagavatam in the 18th chapter. The same Parikshit Maharaj who did Kari Nigrahanam, he was protected at the time of death. But when the situation arose that he had to be cursed, everything he gave up in a moment. Not even thinking about what, what all he had. Everything was given up in a moment. He just went away, abandoning everything. And sat where? Sat on the bank of Ganges. To do what? To hear Krishna Kata. And, and to prepare for what? And to prepare for his death. So we are discussing about this in the first three verses. Isn't it very amazing? That is what our Takura says, our Acharya says. Yes, it is amazing. We were discussing about Parikshit giving up his body. The same Parikshit, when it came to the last moment, he was completely fearless and he gave up everything and went to the abode of the Supreme Lord like that. So how his life was amazing is spoken in these first three verses. Although he was uh, burnt by the Brahmastra of Drauni, that is Ashwatthama, he did not die in his mother's womb. Although he was burnt, you know, he was revived, right? So the meaning is he was saved by the Supreme Lord. How was he saved? Why he did not die? Because of Supreme Lord's mercy. Lord Krishna, he bestowed mercy because of which he revived. Although he was burnt by the Astra of Drauni. This is actually Krishna, right? Who is doing wonderful activities. Adbuda Karmana. The first verse, there is Adbhuta Karmana, it is referring to Krishna. But by Krishna's mercy, this Parikshit also has Adbhuta, Adbhuta birth. Right? Because of Krishna's mercy. So, uh, Krishna is Adbhuta Karmana, that is what is seen in this verse. But by his mercy, we see that Parikshit Maharaj is also, Parikshit Maharaj's life is also wonderful. His life is also um, amazing. He was not burned by the Astra of Drauni, which is Ashwatthama. So now, uh, uh, Bhagavatam, it clearly speaks about the child, uh, Parikshit Maharaj, being saved in the womb, protect, where Krishna is entering the womb. womb. Like he saved uh, Parikshit Maharaj by using which weapon? By Gada. And he saved 
or protected the Pandavas by using which weapon? Sudarshan. So in any case, he was protected, right? By Gata, in case of Parikshit Maharaj, in the case of Pandavas, he was, they were all saved by Sudarshan Sakra. So when that, uh, again, we are talking about the Astra of Drauni that was attacking the Pandavas and which was attacking the Parikshit Maharaj at, the, uh, at that time. So how they were protected by Krishna. So that is why Vishnu Chakravati Takura over and over says that his life was amazing. His birth was amazing. See, when the surge, sages heard about Kali Nigrahana, they were very much surprised. What an amazing personality. This personality, Parikshit Maharaj, oh my God, he even defeated Kali. Kali couldn't do anything. Kali couldn't influence his kingdom. And rather, Kali fell at his feet. That means the, the Kali fell at the feet of Parikshit Maharaj. Is that the scenario? So the sages, they became wonderstruck. To those Munis, Sutta Goswami is saying, right from birth, up to Bhagavad Prabhupada, this personality is Adbuddha, Adbuddha. He is Parikshit Maharaj, he is Adbud. His entire life, his entire biography is full of wonderful events. Uh, this, is, this is what our Acharyas are saying. And then, you know, his uh, disappearance is amazing as well. Although he was, you know, we can understand. Prabhupada also addresses this in the purport. He says the sages were stuck with wonder after especially hearing Kali Nigrahana episode. Now, Sutta Goswami was equally anxious to describe about Parikshit Maharaj's wonderful birth and then death also. So Sutta Goswami, he wanted to say, yes, yes, now you're going to hear about all of that. How I'm saying why it is amazing. Why I'm why it is amazing. You're going to hear what about it, why it is amazing. That will be seen in these forthcoming verses. So he's eager to talk about everything that he uh, knows about Parikshit in terms of birth, in activities, and his death. So this is what will be forthcoming. Now, verse number two. So we sort of get an idea or context in terms of summary as to what this first verse means. So we get an overall picture. Now, getting into the second verse. Uh, Srila Prabhupada's translation says, Maharaj Parikshit was always consciously surrendered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and therefore he was neither afraid nor overwhelmed by fear due to snake bird, which was supposed to bite him because of the fury of the Brahmana boy. So now this verse, what are we getting into? It is talking about a particular curse and a situation that has happened. So because of uh, this, um, you know, Brahmana by sharp or curse he received, because of which he would be gone. He would be dead within seven days. By what? By biting of the snake. This was ordained by Wuhu Providence. But when he heard this, he was certain that this Brahmana boy's curse actually did not bewilder him. He was not overwhelmed. He didn't have any feeling of bewilderment in his mind, although, and he was not overwhelmed. Although this, this was a matter of great fear for anyone. As soon as somebody hears about death, that too in seven days, what will happen to a person? If a person is here in this material world, and if he hears this news, what would be the ordinary action of the person? He will panic, he will become bewildered, he will become overwhelmed. But for Parikshit, because he has offered his heart at the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. That is, you look at the heart. What are we saying when it comes to heart? Heart is the seat of consciousness, right? It doesn't mean physical heart. What did he surrender? He surrendered the antakaran, right? Antakaran is mana, buddhi, chitta, nahankar. He surrendered this at the feet of the Supreme Lord. So that is that is uh, the situation. That is why, whether in happiness or distress, he was not bewildered in either case. So that is what is spoken in terms of, um, uh, you know, him. Uh, this great quality of him offering his antakaran to the Lord, because of which, even during difficult time, he was not at all bewildered. He was not at all disturbed, right? He was always fixed on the lotus feet of the Lord because he surrendered his heart to the lotus feet of the Lord. Now, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada says, um, you know, uh, a self-surrendered devotee of the Lord is Narayana Parayana. 
So Prabhupada says, the self-surrendered devotee of the Lord is Narayana Parayana. He is never afraid of any place, person or thing or not even death also. They don't. Lord Shiva also talks about this in the sixth canto. Those who are Narayana Parayana, they are not afraid of any situation. Kulashekara Alvar, he also says, so for them, heaven or hell doesn't matter. So even for Parikshit Maharaj, who was wrongfully cursed by this Brahmana boy, what did he take it as? He took it as the mercy of the Lord. He took it as if it came from providence. He thought the Supreme Lord saved me when I was burnt in the womb of Drowni's Brahmastra. So if he wanted to protect me at that time, he, he wanted to protect me at the time of my birth. When Drowni Astra came to my mother's womb, he wanted me to be protected. He wanted to protect me. That's why he protected. Right? So in this situation, if this situation also, which is the curse, this is another Brahmana, Brahmana boy's curse. This is Brahma Sapa. Right? It was sent by a Brahmana, this Ashwatthama. And this is also uh, Bra Brahmastra only. This is also Brahma Sapa, meaning uh, Shringi's words. So Krishna, if he wanted me to be saved from the situation, he would have saved me. Krishna alone is independently supreme. He will do what he wants to do. So if he has ordered that situation, where I will now have to be gone in seven days, so then it is his desire, isn't it? So I will accept his desire. If he want, he could have protected me. Since he protected me that time, this time also he should have protected me. Since it is his independent will, I will take it. I will take it. This is the thing. The devotee never goes against the will of the Lord. Anything sent by the Lord is a blessing for a devotee. It is the mercy, dear devotees. Already we spoke about it many, many classes. This is the point which gets repeated in Srimad Bhagavatam. That anything that comes to us, we look at it in terms of dualities. Yes, this is happiness, this is distress. But everything that is ordained by the Supreme Lord, it's the will of the Supreme Lord to get us closer to his lotus feet. No change to this statement. Right? So it is a blessing. Anything sent by the God, anything sent by Lord is a blessing to us. And that is why Parikshit Maharaj, he was not bewildered by such a thing. So this was a special quality. Because he had offered everything to the lotus feet of the Lord. This is verse number two. We get a great understanding of who Parikshit Maharaj is and what sort of great qualities he has. The first verse sort of said, yes, everything about him is amazing. And now in these forthcoming verses, we are seeing why it is amazing. This is the context. So now second, second uh, verse is specifically talking about the point that because he has surrendered his heart to the lotus feet of the Lord, he was not bewildered by dualities. Now, third verse. So, even in this difficult situation, as we can understand, he was not bewildered. Instead, what did he, what he said is quoted in the next verse. Srila Prabhupada's translation. Furthermore, after leaving all his associates, the king surrendered himself as a disciple to the son of Vyasa, that is uh, Sukadev Goswami. And thus, he was able to understand the actual position of the personality of Godhead and uh, at last gave up this material body on the bank of the river Ganges. So one who was saved in the womb of his mother and one who was not fearful of the death, uh, you know, will be caused by that. He is not fearful of the death that is going to be caused by Takshaka. Parikshit gave up everything. He gave up everything and realized, yes, uh, this is this is all. He gave up his attachments and, uh, you know, realizing that, uh, you know, he has to surrender everything to the lotus feet of the Lord. And Prabhupada, he talks about the word Ajita here. Ajita means, Ajita here refers to the Supreme Lord. So he realized the position of the Supreme Lord. He became completely realized in understanding the Supreme Lord uh, because by the... Uh, by the great Bhagavatam, which is narrated by Sukadev Goswami. By hearing Srimad Bhagavatam from Sukadev Goswami, he was completely established in understanding of the Supreme Lord. So that is known, um, that, is, that is being quoted here. So in this way, 
Parikshit on the bank of Gadjis, he gave up his body like that. So that renunciation of Parikshit Maharaj is spoken about in this verse. That is, that is the context. And now let's try to analyze what our uh, Acharya Vishnu Chakravati Thakura is saying here. Parikshit, uh, you know, he says he's a disciple of Sukadev Goswami. One who, who is this Sukadev Goswami? This person, uh, he's a very realized person. You know what? He has completely understood the position of the Supreme Lord. Supreme Lord Tattva is understood by him. And he, Sukadev Goswami, Parikshit Maharaj, being the disciple of such a person, uh, you know, he he also, I mean, the thing is, uh, I'm sorry, dear devotees, it's not uh, Sukadev Goswami that is being talked about here in this verse. It's being, it is uh, Parikshit Maharaj uh, who's being quoted here. To say that this person is a disciple of Sukadev Goswami and you know the quality of this person, this person is completely realized in Tattva. That means he has understood Lord's Tattva. Um, you know, he has understood the position of the Supreme Lord. And the Vishnu Chakrati Takura, he gives another meaning to say, um, one yeah. who's got the direct realization of Supreme Lord at the time of death. He could see the Supreme Lord at the moment of death. Uh, meaning, uh, he got the direct realization. He was able to see the Supreme Lord. Lord, uh, I mean, he became completely real, become realized of the Supreme Lord at the time of death. So that is how Parikshit Maharaj left his body even before Takshaka beat him. Parikshit Maharaj, what did he do before his death? He was completely focused on the Supreme Lord. He was able to supreme, see, the, see the Supreme Lord and then now Takshaka had to come completely absorbed in that Samadhi he could realize and he could perceive Lord and then Takshaka came and beat him. So this is the understanding. He, so it's like a, he, it, the Takshaka just bit the lifeless body of Parikshit. He was already realizing the Supreme Lord. He got the direct realization and all now Takshaka had to do was to bite him because it doesn't matter because he's already realized the Lord. So he was able to directly realize the Supreme Lord. That aspect is spoken by Srila Vishnu Chakravati Takura. And now Prabhupada, he also writes a very beautiful purport. As I told you, he gives uh, the word Ajita in a very special way. The word Ajita is significant, he says. The personality of Godhead Sri Krishna is known as Ajita or unconquerable. And he is, um, and no one can know his actual position. He is unconquerable by knowledge also. We've heard about his uh, dham. We have heard about uh, his glories in Goloka Vintavan. There are so many scholars who do interpret the abode in different ways. But by the grace of the spiritual master like Sukadev Goswami and uh, see, see, Sukadev Goswami is such a glorious person. And to him, he became a most humble disciple. Right, and then he yeah, one is so when one becomes humbly submitted to the spiritual master, what happens to the such a person? Then such a person he will be able to understand the actual position of the Lord, the eternal abode of the Lord, his transcendental paraphernalia. He can understand everything. But Ajita, as such, is unconquerable. The Supreme Lord is unconquerable. Prabhupada gives this un uh, uh, this statement about unconquerable, meaning nobody can conquer the Supreme Lord. See, nobody can conquer him uh, because he is unconquerable by knowledge. You can't conquer him by strength. You can't conquer him by knowledge. He is independent, right? Of such a supreme lord, this, you know, even though he is Ajita, he is understood by Parikshit Maharaj. His tattva is understood by Parikshit. This was the contrast he was trying to say. He quoted Ajita to say, supreme lord is very, very unconquerable. We know he can be conquered by anything. But this Parikshit Maharaj, because he submitted himself humbly to the uh, Sukadev Goswami, his spiritual master, because of that, now he's got the understanding of the Tattva. Parikshit understood the Tattva of the Supreme Lord who is unconquerable by knowledge. So he's bringing a contrast here, dear devotees. Hope you are able to understand. So although we cannot understand the Supreme Lord, we can understand the Supreme Lord to the degree with which he reveals to us. He has to reveal his glories to us. That much we can understand. So when we hear from great souls, by their mercy and by you having appropriate service attitude of devotional service, 
then Lord can be understood in some way. Right? Otherwise, she is Ajita. Without that mercy, he is Ajita. So when we hear from great souls, and by their mercy, by, that is the only way we can able to understand. Otherwise, it's not possible for any soul to understand the Supreme Lord. Shastra Yunitwa, Vedanta says, he can be understood by hearing of Shastras. Shastra Yunitwa. So by hearing, you know, we can understand to understand him, but that understanding also comes because of the mercy of the great souls. When they speak Krishna Tata through their mercy, if we are humbly submitted to them, then that knowledge will come to us. Otherwise, it is not going to come. This is what uh, is the point that Prabhupada made. And then he talks so many uh, other points as well. He says, mm, uh, uh, so we can't understand him fully, but his position, his tatwa, uh, <clears throat> how we can understand him? By having right samanda gyan, abhide gyan and prayojan. Uh, pray, prayojan. By understanding samanda, abhideya and prayojan from the disciplic section, he could be understood. This can be understood. And uh, again, this clarity is what Parikshit Maharaj achieved in terms of hearing from his spiritual master, Sukadeva Goswami. Although he was a Mahabhagavat, by hearing from Sukadeva, it is said that he got the full understanding of the Supreme Lord. That is the point. He is already a Mahabhagavat. But by hearing from his spiritual master, he got the complete understanding. So that is the glory of hearing from somebody like Sukadeva Goswami who is who here Parikshit considered as a spiritual master. Prabhupada says that. And by that understanding of the Supreme Lord, one will be able to give up attachments to this material world. Then Prabhupada brings up a beautiful theme here. He talks about Param Drishtuva Nivartate. That is the second thing Prabhupada talks about in his purport. He says, one can give up material attachment when how can one give up material attachment? I have uh, this attachment, that attachment, so much attachments with my family, with my uh, you know possessions, with my house, with my car. I have so many attachments. When this person says, how can I give up my attachments? I don't want to artificially give up because I still have the desire lingering in me. I can just renounce, go to the forest, but that's not going to help me sustain in the forest, isn't it? For that, Prabhupada answers the question to say, one can give up this material attachment when one is able to get the higher taste. So actually, by the realization of the Supreme Lord, one will be able to give up material attachment. Uh, and it is proportional, right? Depending upon how much you realize the Lord, to that extent, you can give up material and, uh, attachment. More we experience spiritual joy, more we will be able to give up material attachments. And we will be able to completely give or give up all material attachments, all kinds of contamination, everything when we completely realize the Lord. Meaning, when we achieve Bhava Bhakti or Prema Bhakti, that is the stage we'll be able to give up everything completely. At that time, one will be completely devoid of all sorts of attachment and contamination that is caused by any kind of anarthas. We all know there is four kinds of anarthas. You're not getting into that. But the Param Drishtva Nivartate means in the position of the Supreme Lord. Uh, we, you know, it is said that, he, again, we have to understand, uh, he also was able to give up everything that was mundane because of being able to understand the position of the Supreme Lord. Uh, <clears throat> so one needs to uh, have this higher taste to give up the lower taste. So in our life also, when we take up to Krishna consciousness, we see by Krishna's mercy, we are able to experience some positive aspects of Krishna consciousness. And that is how we are able to give up our lower attachments, the undesirable, undesirable attachments that we have, right? When we uh, see Krishna's name, form, qualities, pastimes, they are so attractive. We remember the joy we first felt. Oh, yeah, during dancing, I mean, when we first danced during the Kirtan or when we first chanted the holy names of the Lord or when we came into the association of devotees, took prasadam, all these facts, we are able to relish the joy, remember the joy. In fact, initially, Krishna is definitely very merciful. It's like a free sample. One, one receives so much joy in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, slowly, slowly, one is able to 
gradually give up his material attachments so the more we get uh, the more we get the realization of krishna the positive attachment for krishna consciousness more we will be able to get rid of these material attachments that we have this is spoken as the second theme in this verse and then the third theme unless one thoroughly understands the superior or uh, eternal energy of the lord it is not possible for us to leave this material energy right so he is talking about the aspect of higher taste again the best way to give up the material desires is to fill the heart with spiritual desires so now he quotes this verse vishaya vinivartante niraharasya dehina rasavajyam rasopyasya param drishtva nivartate so here a very important point dear devotees please pay attention to what i am saying he is a nirakar although this person he is what he is trying to do he is trying to stop uh, giving food to the senses so he stops taking vishayas but what happens vishaya vinivartante actually only vishayas go away rasa doesn't go away he is not coming in contact with the he stops giving food to the senses but okay vishi so in that sense vishayas are going away but rasa is not going away that that thing is spoken by krishna here rasa still remains he is a niragari he is not accepting any shabda roopa varsh sorry the form taste he is not accepting any of the sense objects but so only by that process what happens he is not feeding uh, the sen the senses with sense objects but then vishayas are going away in that process the rasa remains meaning the taste for the material sense object doesn't go away when does it go away then rasopyasya rasa will also go away when you get param drishtva nivartate the rasa din go you are stopping everything you are stopping the senses from seeing all these sense objects but does that solve the problem no it doesn't solve the problem because you still have the desire for the material sense objects the rasa is still there when will that rasa go only when you get the higher taste this is what krishna puts up in this verse of bhagavad gita so we want to get rid of that rasa rasa varjyam rasa is the taste for the taste that we are talking about the degree we can taste the rasa of spirituality to that degree we will be able to give up this mundane rasa the mundane rasa that we see is the rasa we'll be able to give that up so it uh, begins by forcefully engaging us forcefully we have to engage in krishna consciousness or oh, one may say ah oh, mata ji is this a catch 22 or what till the time you give up mundane objects you won't get spiritual rasa and till that time you will not get uh, spiritual rasa you cannot give up mundane objects is it a catch 22 no it's not catch 22 you begin by forcefully accepting nama roopa guna leela of krishna and by that one will get the taste especially because of krishna's mercy and then one will be proportionately also able to give up material attachment this is the point that is demonstrated by our parikshit maharaj then uh, we go into the fourth so you can see the sequence right how propad is giving us the understanding of oh see we saw antakaran was submitted by parikshit maharaj he gave his full heart and surrendered to the lotus feet of the lord and because of that he was not put into bewilderment and then he talks about yes this parikshit maharaj you know he was able to understand the tatva of the lord and because of understanding the tatva of the lord how why he understood the tatva of the lord because he submitted himself to the lotus feet of a spiritual master because of that he got the realization because he humbly submitted himself to the spiritual master he was able to get mercy from the spiritual master because of that he got an understanding of lord's tatva otherwise this lord he is ajita he is unconquerable but he is being conquered and again this conquering comes when lord reveals himself to a devotee that is what happened in the case of parikshit maharaj then he doesn't stop there he then says about param drishtva nivartate right param drishtva nivartate to say that one can give up the mundane rasa by having higher taste to spirituality that way you know one one that is the way one will be able to give up mundane rasa 
so the degree to which you submit yourself to the supreme lord to that degree you will be able to give up your material attachments param trishtva nivrtate now it is uh, going to talk about uh, the, the fourth verse so here it is saying for those who are engaged in hearing the glories of the uttama shloka that is the supreme lord um he, he is the supreme lord is uttama shloka he is being sung in the choicest poetry those who are engaged in drinking this nectar accepting this ne ne nectar for such a people uh, what happens remembering his lo lotus feet he, 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 you know he, they all this these type of people these uttama shlokas are people who uh, relish Uh, who sing the choicest poetry of the supreme lord and who are engaged in drinking this nectar and they are accepting this nectar and for such people they are remembering the lotus feet of the supreme lord because of them being able to remember the lotus feet of the supreme lord they are not bewildered at all typically at the time of death we see everybody in the world is bewildered but for a devotee even at such point one has engaged in the service throughout his life there is no sambrama there is no bewilderment like that that is what is being spoken about in this verse and here um, you know it is uh, such a uh, vishnu chakravarti thakura Ta he talks about it in very much depth mm, so i don't think we have time so we will uh, maybe take it to some other day but that is the essence of fifth verse okay um, <clears throat> now we, i mean fourth verse and then fifth verse we see translation by prabhupa that says vishna chakravarti takura's commentary for fourth verse is also very excellent some some other time we will try to review that but uh, coming to fifth verse as long as the great powerful son of abhimanyu remains the emperor of this world there is no chance of the personality of kali will flourish so that is being spoken about here um kali will not have any power although he has entered he will not have any power till the time there is a king like parikshit he is going to be um there i mean uh, again the point is as long as parikshit is here kali will not have effect the personality of kali cannot flourish like that so after the kali was punished chastised driven away by the king then what was the situation afterwards what happened later that is being talked about here they are asking yeah, yeah you know this uh, parikshit maharaj he defeated kali then how was the situation yes the situation was like this as long as he was there there was no question of kali being able to enter he had no strength <laughs> kali had no strength kali uh, could not influence anybody in his kingdom that aspect of kali not being able to influence anybody in parikshit maharaj reign is being spoken about in verse number 5 and then verse number 6 the very day again shila propas translation goes like this the very day and the moment the personality of godhead lord krishna left this earth, the personality of kali who promotes all kind of irreligious activities came into this world so the very day the personality of godhead lord krishna he left his earth the personality of kali who promotes what uh, irreligious activities he came into this world yes when meaning what the meaning is the lord left his earth that time that moment itself kali came in it seems he entered the earthly planet and as soon as the lord left hmm, uh, although he had come although he had entered parikshit maharaj kingdom he did not in, he had no influence that's what he is trying to say here lord left as soon as lord left this kali stepped but even though he stepped in he was not able to influence anybody because, uh, because there is a personality like kali parikshit he was not able to do anything over there so it is a summary of that event of parikshit being so powerful that he did not kal allow kali to enter like that as soon as the lord left immediately this kali he entered but of course parikshit mara because of the person like parikshit maharaj uh, he was not uh, he was not able to influence at all now prabhupad uh, he gives a beautiful uh, uh, description maybe i'll just go through a little bit and then we can move on to the next verse okay so prabhupad says the personality of kali was not able to enter the jurisdiction of the earth 
due to the presence of personality, I mean, due to the presence of personality of Godhead like Krishna. So when Krishna was there, he was not able to enter. And similarly, there is an arrangement for constant chanting of holy names, qualities of the Supreme Lord. If we have that going on, then there is no chance of Kali to enter. So he made sure all the subjects, they were all situated in what? Devotional service. This is what Parikshit Maharaj uh, did to the devotee, I mean, did to the Praja. They had taken shelter of Supreme Lord, Nama, Rupa, Guna, Leela. So in this way, Kali was kept away. So the same thing Prabhupada is saying, even in the modern times, if we can take shelter of Supreme Lord, Nama, Rupa, Guna, Leela and Seva, then we are able to see that Kali can be kept away. Kali will not be able to influence anybody who has taken shelter of the Supreme Lord. That is the point Prabhupada brings through this purport. So although the Lord has left us, we know the holy name is not different from the Lord. He could have left us physically, but he is there in the form of holy name. He is there in the form of Krishna Kata. He is there in the form of Krishna Kriva, Guna. Everything he is there because they are not different. And that is what Prabhupada clarifies. He talks about, um, uh, you know, Prabhupada would sometimes give an example. Uh, I think, uh, um, I mean, he uh, he says, he would say sometimes these rats or some living entities, they make a hole and they stay there. And what does Sarpa do? Sarpa, move, Sarpa what does Sarpa do? The snake comes, he eats the uh, rats and he stays in the ready-made house, which is there. So Prabhupada would say, atheistic scientists or materialistic people, they invent all these technological gadgets and make technological advancement. And Prabhupada say, so we are going to use it, denounce this materialism itself. It's like eating up that rat. Uh, meaning, although we are using that technological advancement, we are actually denouncing the materialistic way of life. Right? Uh, this, this, uh, 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 this is something that uh, Prabhupada would say. And now uh, the question would be posed, why he did not kill, kill Kali and why he just left him? This is a very important point, dear devotees. Again, please pay careful attention. I know it's a long, our long class, so you cannot focus. But anyways, you try your best to focus on this particular point that I'm trying to say. Because, um, you know, I think it created some impact in me. And uh, I would uh, see that it also creates an impact in you. Um, he saw the good quality of Kali. Of course, Parikshit Maharaj, mm, you know, we all uh, surely understood that uh, the, it, this, the whole thing is a providential arrangement by which Kali was not going to be killed by him. But rather, he was going to be become very powerful. This Kali will become very powerful at a later point of time. But in terms of, this is providential arrangement. We, we understand that fact. I'm not getting into that aspect of the providential arrangement of the uh, God, where Kali had to come and he had to be in this world. This is Kali Yuga, right? But in terms of good quality of Kali, what is that? The nature of seeing good is spoken about in the verse number seven. This is a very interesting verse. Uh, I don't want to skip this verse because it brings up very good points. Maharaj Parikshit was a realist, like a bee who accepts the essence of a flower. He knew perfectly well that this age of Kali, the auspicious things produce good effects immediately, whereas inauspicious acts must actually be performed to render effects. So he was never envious of the personality of Kali. Mm -hmm. So a very important point is being spoken about dear devotees, uh, which is clarified by Srila Prabhupada in his purport also. Uh, that, um, you know, we have to understand this fact. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't want to get into elaborate details, but even within Kali, he saw the good quality. So what is that? He saw that the uh, auspicious acts, the punya karma, what, what happens to those punya karma? They are immediately fulfilled. They become immediately successful in Kali. Just, you know, you just have the sankalpa. You just think about it. Even you don't have to perform that activity. That good activity, you don't even have to perform. You think about it. I want to do uh, help. I want to help this person. I want to do this to this person. Good things. And then by that way, what happens? He reaps punya karmas immediately. What about performing it then? Obviously, he'll reap more. But even that act of sankalpa is going to give results in Kali Yuga. While Papa the results, the results of Papa, when does that reap? 
for papa to reap it has to be done it has to actually be performed so punya karmas this kali yuga characteristic is that you just have to have the sankalpa and it will be taken care of but when papas are done papa when 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 you you get the results of the papa you have to do that activity to reap the results of papa if you think about papa some sinful activity you don't reap any result for that while punya karma you think of doing good to somebody you reap results but when it comes to bad bad things you take you know you are thinking sinful uh, you know you are thinking something ill about a devotee you are thinking something bad about some person those activities do they reap results no you are thinking only now it's in the thinking stage when does that fructify it fructifies only when you perform that activity that is the time it fructifies till that time it has no effect this is the special characteristic of kali yuga this is the good quality he saw this is an amazing characteristic of kali yuga that parikshit maharaj saw this was the goodness that he saw in kali yuga so that's why he was not at all envious he didn't have wish or hatred towards kali yuga you understood this is clarified here in this verse just like how when he kripa compares about the, the bee right what what is the bee comparison here just like the bee captures the essence what of the sar sar some people they captures the essence of the prabhupada's purport what is the essence saragrahi you have to capture the essence that's the quality of a bee and that is that sara you know meaning in this kali yuga um, actually punya karmas reap results just uh, by sankalpa alone you know even by sankalpa you can re, uh, reap the results if that one does good sankalpa in his heart Uh, a serious sankalpa within his heart that itself will be able to reap results but then when it comes to uh, bad karma you no know, you don't have you will not reap results when you just think or have thought about it but you will reap results only when you perform them so when the perform when the performance of that activity is done that is the time you get the result otherwise by mere desire or mere thought the sinful activities don't reap result this uh, means that in other yugas what about it in satya yuga dwapar yuga what happened there what is why do you say it's a special characteristic of kali yuga there what happens is even if one thinks badly he gets a reaction karmic reaction will immediately come to him even the thought is there they will get the punishment they get that karmic reaction but in kali yuga it is a special benediction uh, so this is the point dear devotee so my question my point is we need to understand how fortunate we are so many bad mm. thoughts are coming to us every minute every second isn't it and that is all krishna is forgiving us for all that bad thoughts that's coming to us as long as you have some sense control then you just have that sense control not to commit but what happens we still go and commit us that's why when it comes to chanting the lord's name we don't get that ruchi so many things like this are stopping us from getting that ruchi to chant or to glorify the lord you need to have ruchi isn't it without ruchi how you can glorify the lord how you can speak from your heart it's not possible you need to have some taste to this process of devotional service that you know lord has given us this kali yuga characteristic the mind is completely uncontrolled in kali yuga but senses are to some extent okay so likely that we would be able to control our senses and not commit any sinful activities i thought this was a very very uh, insightful verse which prabhupad has given us to understand how important it is for us to see our fortune in kali yuga and then number 8 talks about the fact that maharaj considering that less intelligent men uh, might find the personality of kali to be very powerful but those who are self controlled have nothing to fear the king was powerful like a tiger and he took care of the foolish careless persons so uh, the kali can uh, do any harm to those who are dhiras so only those people he you know he uh, only those less intelligent people they could be fearful of kali but not people like parikshit maharaj kali actually fears those dhiras Uh, when it comes to ignorant less intelligent people kali is surena it is very powerful those people they they consider kali to be very powerful but for dhiras 
Kali is not to be feared. So Parikshit Maharaj was like a dira. He was a tiger. He protected all uh, the personalities who were also not diras. In his praja, there were some people who were careless, who were not so expert, not so diras. He made sure that all of them were protected, that they did not fall prey to the sinful activities that Kali has. And if that is the situation, uh, then what power Kali has got? No power. That is the point of this eighth verse. Like that, Kali, when people who are careless, unprotected people are there, Kali may be able to influence them, do something to them. But for the personalities like Parikshit Maharaj, Kali, what fear can, it, can he install or instill upon that, that kind of people? That is the point of the verse. The king was also thinking like this. When people are unprotected, Kali is very, very um, powerful. Kali is powerful. When people are Viveki, when people are Jiras, when people are devotees, then Kali is fearful of them. Kali is only powerful when people are careless, not intelligent. That is, they are not Viveki. So, uh, this is the point which is being clarified in verse number 8. Uh, Mataji, Pranams, uh, do you want me to go through verse number 9? Um, yes, I mean, yes Mataji, if you can go through okay. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just, uh, just uh, spend a minute or so. So here, uh, it is the translation is saying, Oh sages, as you did ask me, now I have described almost everything regarding the narrations about Krishna in connection with the history of pious Maharaj Parikshit. So I have spoken especially Kali Nigrahanam. Whatever you had asked me, I have spoken. Uh, this is all connected about Parikshit Maharaj, his activities, I have spoken. So you, you speak the episode of I mean, he, it is uh, so, I mean, the point here is that whatever you have asked me, I have spoken. Till now, I have described all the episodes completely to you. So, you know, I, I think I have kind of, uh, the, 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 you know, he's, he's kind of wanting to clarify that, uh, you know, sages have spoken everything. I have spoken about the narrations of Lord Krishna and I've spoken about the history of Parikshit Maharaj. So I hope I clarified everything like that. He, Sutta Goswami is posing this question to the sages to see that they are kind of um, okay with what has been spoken so far. That is verse number nine. With this, we can conclude dear devotees. Ancha kalpa taruvya shya kripa sindhu vye vacha patita nam pavane pyo vaishna vepyo namo namaha ananta koti vaishna vrindh ki jai namacharya shrila haridasa ko ki jai shrila prabhupa ki jai kaurabhakta vrindh ki jai all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to all of you. Sheila Vishnu Chakravati Takuraki Chai. Hare Krishna. We saw some commentaries Hare. from him. So we will try to appreciate whatever he has given for us. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji. Thank you very much. Sorry, I had to change various places in my house to come to the router as <laughs> near as the router and switch off my video. So I really apologize for that. No, no worries. Um, Mataji, uh, I missed out because I was changing devices about the snake and the, um, uh, the rat story. And then in the beginning, when you said Parikshit Maharaj was saved by the Gada. So that huh. story also I missed out. So kindly oh. elaborate that. Oh, how no worries, Mataji. Uh, in terms of uh, Gada, I was just, uh, you know, how Parikshit Maharaj was protected in the womb of Uttara. That was by Lord Gada. Uh, the Brahmastra was taken care of by Lord Gada in the womb. Uh, this is how Parikshit Maharaj was protected in the womb of, uh, in the womb when he was there. Uh, so that the is Gada that was the point. Was, yeah. The Gada uh, killed the, I mean, destroyed the yeah, Brahmastra. It pacified, it pacified the Brahmastra. So that is the weapon that was used uh, to take care of Parikshit Maharaj, uh, Parikshit Maharaj's protection. And then uh, with regards to the Musaka, what I meant to say was Prabhupada mentioned, I mean, usually says the story to say that, see, um, there is the snake. Uh, we, uh, you know, what happens is in the house, there are rats. And when the snake comes, this rat is eaten by the snake and he then becomes the king of that house. Like that, what we do uh, with regards to technological advancements is that we try to use all these technologies. We have so many technologies that we are using for our devotional service. But at the same time, we denounce the materialists. 
like the the snake case where the snake kills the rat and becomes a king like that we try to use these technological advancements but at the end of the day we denounce those materialists also uh, to you know <laughs> to say that you know whatever you are doing you you have to come to krishna consciousness because what you are doing it's not going to give you any benefits shama eva hi kevalam when you don't have krishna in the center you may be a millionaire you may be doing so many things it's all shama shama there is no use of what you are doing there is no use shama eva hi kevalam that's it that was the point i mentioned with regards to yeah thank you thank you very much for the clarification any other questions or comments by anybody else kindly unmute and ask i'm not able to see any hands raised if uh, there are no questions or comments then we can end the session okay there are no questions or comments um, maybe arya govind prabhu are you able to uh, end this session today hari krishna mata ji thank you um thank you so much mata ji for for this wonderful class uh, uh describing uh, um parikshit maharaj wonderful uh, wonderful history and uh, always relish your class giving all the details of uh, previous verses and then uh, we get we get uh, uh remember i mean we get the remembrance of all the other verses also Uh, thank you so much mataji for this uh, for this session uh, i request all the devotees to unmute and then uh, chant hare krishna maha mantra once in glorification of his her grace the radhika kasturi mataji hey krishna hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna hare hare ram 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 hare 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 श्रील प्रभुपाद की अग्रेस राधे कस्तूरी मत जी की असेंबल डेवोटी ऑल ग्लोरी टू श्रीला प्रभुपाद हरे कृष्णा ऑल ग्लोरी टू गुरु महाराज हरे कृष्ण Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Mata Ji. For Thank you, Mata Ji. Hare Krishna. See you all next week. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Prabhu, is it possible to end the uh, uh, switch the recording off? Yes, yes, Mata Ji. Then we can leave the session.